Hello! In this tutorial, we're going to be using Illustrator to make three color wheels for the three color systems in use today that are traditional, additive, and subtractive that correspond to three different media paint, powdered pigments that artists and craftspeople use in the traditional color wheel. Light is the medium for the additive color wheel, light emitting devices like our computers, for example, and a subtractive color system. For example, uh, the inks in our printers that we use every day uh, on our desktop printers is uh, related to, is the medium used for the subtractive color wheel. Now, each system depends on the inherent physical properties of the medium being used. Mixing color works differently in each system, and so we're going to have a different set of primary colors for each one. We're going to be using a numerical naming system that corresponds to the 360 degree circle. We're going to be in the HSB slider mode here, HSB in the color palette so that we can look at the, these numeric uh, numbers that correspond to the colors. Okay, and we're going to start with a traditional color wheel. Red is the first color and you know most of us start with uh, the painting colors when we're kids. Red, yellow, and blue paint is you know jars of red, yellow, and blue paint are used in every elementary school class or kindergarten or you know in our home little home studios that we have when we're, we're children and we mix you know together these three hues and we can produce any of the other colors whether you're an artist using you know oil paints watercolors uh, pastel chalks if you have these three colors you can you know ostensibly mix all the other colors in the color wheel if they're just the right primary uh, uh, red yellow and blue Okay, the second uh, colors are going to be the secondary colors, and those colors are um, orange at 30, green at 120, and notice this color at maximum saturation. It's a really vivid green. Now, when we mix pigmented paint, because paints are made from pigments, dyes, minerals, various things like that, the properties of the paint, when we mix these two colors together in paint, it never produces a color this light, this fully saturated, this fully bright. So we have to reduce the brightness a little bit. You know, somewhere between 60 and 70 percent, you know, maybe 80 percent if you like it to, to be a little bit lighter. That's going to give you a color that approximates um, a mix between yellow and blue paint. The, the third color, the third um, Secondary color is violet and that is at 270 and that's also going to be at maximum saturation. Now we're going to uh, mix the colors that are in between and these are called the intermediate colors or the tertiary third colors. Okay, red orange is at 15 because it's halfway between 0 and 30. And notice, you know, if you can see this, these little numbers, you know, sometimes just the, just the slightest sensitive touch of the mouse will add a few degrees. It's, you know, close enough that it's not going to be, uh, you know, much, much different in terms of visibility. So if it's either 15 or 15.06, don't worry about those tiny things. It's just um, the sensitivity of the machinery. It'll take too long to make, uh, to adjust everyone perfectly. Okay, so halfway between orange at um, 30 and yellow at 60, is 45 that's going to give us yellow orange and the color between yellow and green is going to be at 90 halfway between 60 and 120 90 but again because we are mixing a color that's between this green that has a little bit of a reduced brightness we're going to reduce the brightness a little bit just to give us a sense that those two colors are mixed together to produce that kind of a hue. Because visibly we want the colors to appear like they are related to, um, you know, the colors that were used, their parent colors, to mix them. Okay, for the, this one, we're going to be at color number 180. And this is going to be a blue-green. Now notice this is a vivid blue. Mixing blue and yellow paint, a little bit more blue and just a little bit of yellow would never produce a color this bright. So again, you know, if, if we have um, a reduction in brightness to approximate the way this, these two colors would look together, mixed together, that's going to give us a blue-green. Okay, then we're going to go to blue-violet. That's at about 
255, between 240 and 270, 255 gives us a nice blue violet. And this color is going to be somewhere between 300 and 330. Whoops, there goes my sensitive mouse. Scroll away. Okay, here we go. Now notice that this is magenta. There is no cyan or magenta in the traditional color wheel because in order to have you know to produce pink we would add uh, white to red now in this case we have to reduce the brightness to give us a feeling that these two colors are mixed together it looks a little bit too violet to me uh, so somewhere between 330 300 and 330 um, you know 315 maybe will give us a color that looks a little bit more uh, like it's a mix between oops, the two or, you know, 330, if that you like it a little bit more red, you can play around with the brightness a little bit. You know, reducing the brightness, uh, adjusting the brightness bar to give the color that you feel looks just about right. So I'm going to go right in the middle at 315 and call it a day. Okay, now we're moving on to the additive color wheel. Red, green, and blue are the primary colors in this color system. So we're going to start back at red, green. We have to have red, green, and blue light in order to mix all the other colors. Uh, those combined, combined wavelengths of light will produce the other colors. Okay, and the third color is going to be blue at 240. And these colors must always be in the additive color wheel at maximum saturation. Okay, the uh, secondary colors are yellow at 60. Cyan at 180, and notice that this is going to be really vivid because combining blue and green light will produce a color that is cyan light. So that's an important distinction. And the third color this, uh, in this secondary color uh, mix is magenta, and that is at 300, again at maximum saturation. Mixing blue and red light produces magenta. Mixing blue and red paint produces violet. So very important to know the difference. Okay, now the intermediary colors are similar and we have uh, orange at 30. The next color is going to be yellow green at 90. Cyan green at 150. Cyan blue at 120. Oops, sorry, 210. Dyslexic. Okay. And the color here is going to be violet at 270. And this color is going to be red magenta, halfway between 300 and 0, is 330. And that's also going to be at maximum saturation. So all these colors are at maximum saturation. Okay, moving on to the subtractive color wheel. Notice we have RGB. These are the light wavelengths. In the subtractive color wheel, our primary colors are cyan at 180, magenta at 300, and yellow at 60. Notice that the secondary colors of the additive color wheel happen to be the primary colors of the subtractive color wheel. And now what's going to be interesting is that the secondary colors of the subtractive system happen to be the primary colors of the additive color wheel. So important distinction, the larger shapes, uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow for the subtractive color wheel and those primary positions. Okay, and the secondary colors are going to be blue at 240, mixing cyan and magenta produces blue ink, we're using ink. The uh, next color is going to be red at 0 or 360, and that's produced by mixing magenta and yellow ink. And the third color is going to be green at 120, and that is produced by mixing cyan and yellow ink. Okay, and these colors are also at maximum saturation and brightness. Okay, 
Uh, you could technically use um, the CMYK mode that has some black in the mix. There are you know, colors that are modified or use swatches that are modified, adjusted to printing for printing purposes, but we want to stick with um, the maximum saturation colors to get to know the colors first and then later on as you develop a little bit more knowledge of the system you could add black to the mix to calculate it how it's going to look for a printer but for now let's just keep it at maximum saturation okay and then here we go the next color is at 210 270 330, the red magenta, orange at 30, yellow green at 90, Oops. and cyan green at, oops, here we go, cyan green at 150. All right, and now to complete our assignment here, we want to fill the colors to demonstrate what happens in the center. Now, when we mix red, yellow, and blue paint, the color sub subtracts out, it neutralizes. So essentially what we get is we get black in the mix, okay? So this color is going to be black in the center. Uh, go. Okay, so for this one we're going to use black for the mix. Maybe it's not cooperating. Okay, we want black in the center there. Shows what happens when mixing red, yellow, and blue paint together. The color subtracts out and we get black. And when mixing red, green, and blue light together, the color mixes, or the light waves produce white light. And in this one, the color um, produces black as well when mixing red, I'm sorry, cyan, magenta, and yellow inks together. They produce, a, you know, it's, it's often a murky gray uh, color rather than a pure black. So this is why we actually add black ink when uh, to our printers so that we get the rich tonality of the colors uh, you know that um, produce a nice dark value or rich tonalities okay now if we want to lighten or remove the stroke lines we can uh, use the command um, command a or option a to select everything and we can go up here to the stroke line which is up here and go up to 0.25 and now we have removed the stroke lines or made them very very subtle so uh, we could also you know go all the way up to and just type in zero if we wanted to okay so there's no stroke line there okay so now we have no stroke line so either way whatever uh, way you like the way it looks we now have uh, three color wheels that are complete for this assignment all right let me know if you have any questions